You know, I was thinking about the Jeffersons, George and Wheezy Jefferson. And for many of you, I am George Jefferson, except I'm in real life. George Jefferson was a fictional character of success, a fictional character of leaving the neighborhood and moving up to the penthouse in the sky. And for many of you, I represent one of the few people that talks about building success, creating an environment of success. And for some of you, it's like a fantasy. I had some comments like, dude, yeah, like you bought a Porsche and you still got money in the bank. I begin to understand there are many people who cannot conceive wealth because they live in a lack environment. They were born into a lack environment. They exist in a lack environment. All they know is lack. They don't know about abundance. They don't know about stacking cash. On Savage Finance, I had someone, you know, say for someone making $35,000 a year, for them to save $35,000, is unrealistic and i'm going to tell you where one of my money money mentors was someone i worked with who lived who made less money than i did my money mentor had an excellent father and her father said while you're living with me and your mother you should save all of your money so when you leave us you will have a attitude fund so by the time she was 12 or 14 she was working when she moved out of her parents house she had a savings account of $75,000 but she never made more than $20,000 in a year and what she did was she judiciously avoided and sidestepped many of the common financial mistakes that many people make I know this is gonna sound very controversial, but financing a car is a financial mistake unless you have a lease in your corporate name and that lease payment becomes a tax deduction. That is the only time that financing a car makes financial sense. There is, I want a new car, I enjoy new cars, my credit score dictates I can get this car. But at the end of the day, if you crunch the math on financing cars, you will see that it's just detrimental to your wealth building process. And my mentor, you know, she bought a house. She had two cars. She was one of the first people I knew to have two cars. She had a old Mustang that she had fixed up and she had her little uh, point A to point B car, both which she paid in cash. And this chick was making six to seven dollars an hour less than I was, yet she had at the time more wealth than I did because she owned a house, she had these cars, she had no debt. And for many of you who have not had the exposure to that, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking, because there was someone who was banned from the plantation because when I told my story of when I did white collar crime, that's all they needed to hear because people are looking for cheat codes, people are looking for shortcuts, and they just want to avoid the time and the effort that goes into building a business. Now, my first businesses all failed. I, I tried to take a picture with the pooch, I tried a janitorial service. I tried selling crap out of a catalog. They all failed because I did not know what I did not know. It was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna hustle. And I was managed to sell some stuff and I was good at getting people to hear me out. But I wasn't really good at the structure and the strategy of putting together a business. And this is something that we're going to cover in the corporate toolbox. Because my goal, I am 100% serious. I wanna create 50,000 corporate citizens in the next five years. And what is a corporate citizen? 
It is a person that avoids, that, that enjoys corporate perks and makes corporate money and has massive tax advantages. And part of this is, because I've learned from starting these businesses that did not do well, how to start a business because I started my first business that was profitable and I want you guys to listen to me. It was doing something that I was already good at. I was already selling office furniture. I started my side business, my side hustle, selling office furniture. So I was able to dovetail the two because I was selling office furniture for this corporation and I was selling office furniture for me and JDA. But I already knew how to sell office furniture. I already had resources. I already had customers. I already had contacts. And that's why that business was so successful. And then when I changed it, I went from selling used office furniture to new office furniture because I made so many mistakes and the profit margin wasn't there with the new furniture that was there with the used furniture. I didn't, I made money. I made revenue, but I didn't make a lot of profit. My first foray into business, I made way more profit with less effort, less time and less attention. And I learned a very important lesson from that. So I went out and I was like, Hey, I need to find some new stuff. And that got me in the storage auction business. And we're going to talk about these processes because to create these corporate citizens, I got to bring you in gently because part of the strategic holding company, it kind of goes over the heads of some people because going back to, you don't know what you don't know. And I have been steeped in corporate culture since business environments. When the dude taught me how to set up my first LLC. And I was like, oh, all right. And the game was explained to me at really care at crate at panel systems unlimited. I remember panel systems unlimited. My cubicle was next to the guy who ran the place. And I remember Warren, who was a CPA, he came to talk to him and Warren was an aggressive CPA. He wanted to understand the business. And he would come in there and talk to Bob and I listened to that whole conversation and that was just soaked up the game because one of the guys who worked for panel systems, well, he was one of the owners, but he worked in the company receiving a paycheck like the rest of us. And he got his rest of his month money through monthly quarterly dividends, quarterly distributions. And I, I just learned so much. And I realized that you guys have not been put in those environments because see, this is one of the things going back to my first business. Why did it succeed? I was in an environment that guaranteed that I would be successful. I want you to understand that because you know, when it was all happening, I didn't really know what was going on, but now looking back with the knowledge I have now, I can see how that business was successful because it was, it was operating in an environment that guaranteed success. And many people start businesses that in environments that are hostile to success. And we're going to be breaking all that down because what do I teach? You should start a business that is in alignment with your strengths. And that's what I did. And that's why I was so successful because I was already good at selling office furniture. And for you, we're going to have to do some apprenticeship type work and technician type work because there are many people who did not grow up like I did. I grew up in the seventies and the eighties with popular mechanics, readers digest. These were periodicals that you would read and you would do stuff like readers digest had, a word test and I would really, you know, I would get like 20, I was really young and I would get like 20 out of 25. And I remember the times that I got all 25 and I was really zooted up and then popular mechanics would have these tests. You would build stuff, you would create stuff. And also when I was a kid, 
Flying kites was a very popular thing. I don't know if flying kites is that popular because that would happen around March because it would get really windy and it would be kite season. And we would, I remember one of the best kites I ever got was from Captain Crunch. One of the things that used to happen when I was a kid was we would have to take the box tops or something off of a box and put it in an envelope and send it back to the cereal company and they would send us stuff and I got this Captain Crunch cr kite. It was blue with a big image of Captain Crunch embossing on it and that was the best kite I ever had because I've never had a kite that got that high as that Captain Crunch kite and the Captain Crunch kite got so high I lost it because the string just broke. But there was a lot about doing. And right now we don't have a lot of um, periodicals or things in our culture that are about doing and creating. And this is creating a disconnect with success because when you do and you create, it trains you. Because this is one of the things I'm gonna teach in the corporate toolbox. You can take the, because this is one of the things, I take business tactics from one business model and move them over here and apply it to this new business model. And you will find out that it's kind of like chess pieces. You can arrange the board. You could take some chess pieces from over here, bring them over here and run the board. And we're gonna talk about that because my time at Renecrate, my time at Panel Systems, my time in business environments gave me a corporate business education. And I still use things from way back when, two decades ago to this very day, because timeless business principles do not deteriorate. Scams, hacks, this new wave, this new tactic, social media stuff, it's constantly changing. But timeless tactics don't change. Like today, I went ahead and I rearranged Hustlers Kung Fu life skills. I lowered the prices, I created payment plans. Cause see, this is the thing. And this is a lesson I learned from Dave Ramsey, which I'm going to apply to Savage Finance in the Corporate Toolbox. Dave Ramsey has been selling the same information for 33 years. I want you to really think about that. Dave Ramsey has been selling the same information for 33 years. And I'm going to model the Dave Ramsey business model for Savage Finance. Like, one of the best things I did when I created B-School for Hustlers, I went ahead and I created future course slots. There's no information there, but for people who bought the discounted packages I set off when I created Savage Finance, when I fill in those courses, I don't have to update them. I don't have to send them anything. They just go in their dashboard and the course is there. And that's one of the best things I ever did. Like for the corporate toolbox, I just had to change some stuff around and it's all gonna be there because I'm not going to create any new courses for B-School for Hustlers. What is there is gonna be there. And what I'm gonna do, deploy the Dave Ramsey model is sell that same information to new audiences. One of the things I'm gonna do this month is I'm going to do some outreach where I will be on other YouTubers channels um, spreading the gospel. Because I really believe in this project. I really believe that if I can transform 50,000 regular people into corporate citizens and drop in that game, we can touch millions. We touch the employees that these people will employ. We touch the families. We touch, when you start a business, you touch so many people. You touch your customers, you touch your vendors and suppliers and employees and the families of those employees. So if I can go ahead and get 50,000 corporate citizens indoctrinated into the game, we will touch millions. 
And to me, this is a better use of time than sitting around looking for reparations. I know I'm triggered some people with that. I really don't care because my retirement is gonna be just like my current life. There will be no drop off. And that's because I'm playing the corporate game. My retirement will be just as luxurious, just as fancy, just as abundant as my life right now. Why? Because playing corporate fifth dimensional chess will allow me to do this. Because right now, we're gonna talk about tax advantage. Right now, everyone's talking about a 401k or a Roth RA, where you can get your money out tax-free. I think the Roth, you, you, you get to put your money in tax-free into the 401k, and you get to withdraw the money from the Roth tax-free. When you start playing fifth dimensional corporate chess, you will have tax advantages far greater than you can get with a 401k or far greater than what will happen with a Roth RA. Far greater. Like I'm getting ready to put myself on salary once my AdSense gets to $30,000 a month. That's gonna be my salary. That's gonna be the only money that I'm taking out of the company. All monies in, will, in the company will be reinvested into company activities. And money that is reinvested back into company activities, you don't have to pay taxes on it because it becomes a business expense. That is the corporate game. And I want to teach 50,000 people how to play that game. So you can start winning. So you can go out and pay cash for a new Porsche if you want to. You can go out and pay cash for your next house if you want to. You could go ahead and if you're, you're a father who has a daughter and she's getting married, you could pay for the wedding. If you have uh, your father and you have kids who are going to college, you can write those checks out because you're a corporate citizen. And also, as we get in it, because the way that I'm going to break this down, we're going to start with the foundational elementary stuff going back to when Duke beat Michigan, when they had the Fab, the Fab Five, by all accounts, Michigan should have five national championship rings up there. But Duke, which was fundamentally sound, and for those folks it's like, oh, you got it wrong. I watched that game. I remember that game because I was rooting for the Michigan. But Duke, which was fundamentally sound, technically proficient Bobby Hurley was a beast I used to hate myself some Bobby Hurley he was just that good he was a beast but he was 100% fundamentally sound and this is the way that I'm gonna bring you up we're gonna start with the fundamentals first and then we're gonna get into your corporate structure then we're gonna get into building you know starting structuring and scaling your company. We're gonna talk about branding. We're gonna talk about all the things that you're not hearing here on YouTube because you have a bunch of people who have a tactic, not an evergreen principle where you can deploy this tactic and make some money. Like one of the biggest tactics right now is Amazon FBA. And now the new sale is we will build your Amazon FBA business for you. I'm going to tell you why that is dangerous. You have someone build a business for you and you don't know how to run it. You don't know how it was set up. You are sitting in grave danger. Why? Because Amazon FBA is consistently you know, changing. Uh, back in my storage auction days, you could start an Amazon FBA business literally with 500 bucks and just parlay your profits until you get to a point where you can start taking some money out. You can't do that anymore. If you're not starting your Amazon FBA without, without, tw without about 20 to 50,000, you're just gonna struggle. You're gonna struggle. And this is why things are changing. This is why we're going to be building businesses and I'm gonna teach you business fundamentals, teach you how to market, teach you how to set up your corporation, teach you how to brand your company, teach you how to do your corporate banking, teach you all of that stuff so you can become a corporate citizen because so we can all be George Jefferson. 
We can all be moving to penthouses. So we can all be like having a maid. I have a maid. I'm about to get my chef back. I have to think about that because uh, I'm doing smoothies in the morning and I'm, I'm, I might, I gotta reach out to her. But one of the things I want you guys to understand is once you become a corporate citizen, once you start serving your fellow man, once you start creating that level of energy, you fundamentally change your life. Like I said, I'm getting ready to borrow from Dave Ramsey. There are so many business models you could simply just borrow from these tactics. I took the one funnel away challenge by Russell Bronson and they talked about this because if you see a good website, take out your credit card, buy the product and check out their checkout process. And this is something I said because I remember I was in the group and someone was looking for heavy hitter closers and you know they wanted to sell their product for $50,000. And I said, this is what you do. You go out and you find a product that's for $50,000 and you buy it and then you reverse engineer their whole process. And they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to spend the money. I buy a lot of courses, but I sell a lot of courses. One of the reasons I'm able to sell a lot of courses is I believe in courses. I bought the One Funnel Away Challenge. I'm in a YouTube course. I bought um, a how to make commercial courses. I bought um, how to do live. I buy courses because I believe in courses. But there are many people who will create an online course but will never buy a course because they just want to get that money. Sad. Because when you buy courses, you learn how to sell more courses. Because when I got the Russell Bronson One Funnel Away Challenge, I really checked out the whole process. And you will see some of that in the corporate toolbox. Because once again, I used to do webinars and then you know put the webinars and you know, I'm gonna do coursework, give you the coursework, and then do maybe a weekly webinar so you have time to do the courses and if you have questions and that's what the webinar would be this is something i didn't do before this isn't something i set up before and tomorrow is september 1st and that's when i started creating the training for the corporate toolbox and the first thing we're going to talk about is why you should start a business we're going to start with the fundamentals we're not going to start because a lot of people want to get to the advanced tactics so they can start making money real quick but Let's revisit Duke versus Michigan. Michigan, from an athletic standpoint, was head and shoulders above Duke. But Duke won the national championship because they were technically proficient. They were fundamentally sound. So everyone that goes through the corporate toolbox is going to be fundamentally sound. You're going to be able to talk intelligently with your CPA. You're going to be able to talk intelligently with your banker. When I went in and set up my checking account system for my corporation and I had a banker who had been dealing with corporations because she was a corporate banker and then they made her head of the bank and she opened my account and she was shaking her head. She's like, yeah, very few entrepreneurs do it like this. Very few. And I've even had some of you when you went and bought the money management course and you were like, Man, they were looking at me all like I'm great. They're not used to people coming in armed with this level of knowledge. They're not used to it. They're used to the regular. They're used to the average man. They're not used to corporate citizens. They're not used to this. We're gonna take over the world. We're gonna create so many wonderful, profitable businesses. I had a consult this morning and it was the typical entrepreneur's journey. You would start a business and it would cost you so much money and you would make very little money, if any. We're not gonna do that here. We're gonna start businesses and we're going to talk about online businesses. We're gonna talk about offline businesses. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a section talking about your business model and just go ahead and pick out many business models, break down how they work and the things you need to do to make your money. So let's all become George Jefferson.
let's go ahead and get that penthouse. Let's go ahead and get that made. Let's go ahead and start doing the George Jefferson dance. I am George Jefferson and you can be one too. So go below the links below you, you know, the September special right now, you can get it for 2,400 one and done, or you can get on the 16 month payment plan. You can go ahead and get that and this will bring you in. And there's a lot of stuff that's coming. We're going to have fun. We're going to cut a fool and we're going to open new doors. So once again, this is your George Jefferson. I will see you guys in the next video.